Hello everyone and welcome. Today I've got the 125th scale 68 Shelby GT500 back on the bench. I first showcased this project a little while back, and since then it served as a nice test bed for the FZ01 front suspension and steering assembly. This was the first car that I built using this latest FZ01 design, and recently it's sort of been like a daily driver for me. While you don't really see it much on camera, the way the suspension moves and the car handles is very fun to watch and very fun to drive. The chassis and suspension was certainly more of the main focus with this build, as the body was sort of a quote-unquote barn find that had already been painted and partially assembled prior to me receiving it. It may not be the best looking body, but hopefully after today I can get it looking a little better. Here's how the car looks right now. Off camera I put on a different set of wheels. These have an old school American racing look to them. I thought they'd look a little better on this car than the ones that I had on prior once I get them painted. I'll post the STL files for these exact wheels on Patreon if you'd like to print a set for yourself. Link will be below in the description. The other thing I did was place a couple of body posts right under the cowl. This body is held on using screws from the underside of the chassis, rather than the four magnetic body posts that I've showcased on the majority of my builds. These body mounts which use screws have their advantages, but also some disadvantages as well. On this car I found that the front of it was sitting a little low. This is partially because the front suspension needs some adjustments, but also the body was not sitting level on the chassis. So all I did was place these body posts on the front for the cowl to sit on and problem solved. The wheels looked good on the car and had the size and offset that I wanted, so I removed them and painted them. This here was sort of the look I was going for. I wanted the spokes to be gray and have some sections painted chrome or silver like the outer rim. I ended up just painting the wheels gray, let them dry, then added those details with the silver sharpie, and for how easy this was to do, the result looks really cool. I was very happy with how these wheels turned out. I might have to check out some of the chrome pen options that are out there to see how they compare with the Sharpie, but for how fast and easy this was to do, I'm very pleased with the result, and I think these are going to look perfect on the GT500. We'll see that in just a bit, but for now, I want to focus on the interior. Like the body, the interior was mostly complete and painted, but in its current state, there's no way it's going to fit on the RC chassis with all of those electronics and wires below. Some serious hacking was going to be required, but I figured having any form of interior would be better than just being able to see straight through the body to the chassis below, so very carefully and with a high degree of precision, I removed material from the bottom of the interior tub. I test fit the interior and kept removing more material until I knew it would clear the chassis below. It's going to be one shallow interior, but again, I think having anything will be better than nothing. I traced and cut out a piece of styrene that I can glue to the bottom to create a new floor. Before painting, I couldn't resist doing a quick mock-up. The increased weight of the interior has thrown off the front suspension, but regardless, it fits. I glued the steering wheel in place, and I also 3D printed a little seat and driver figure that I can put in the interior. Again, I'll post the STL file for this on Patreon. I did a little post print finishing work on that part before painting it and the interior piece flat black. While those parts were drying, I did my best to spice up the body a bit. It's far from perfect, but hopefully a little detail work can help improve the appearance. I started by using a silver sharpie to paint or repaint some of the window trim and some other details around the body. After that, I used a black wash to try to add a little more depth to the grill. I found the fog lights and a set of side view mirrors on the parts tree, which I installed.
finally, I added the rocker panel stripes. They were in rough shape and were a huge pain to get on. The backing paper had been bent a lot, and this kit may have not been stored in the best environment, so they were not fun to work with, but I did get each of them on, but certainly not perfectly. Later you'll see chunks of the stripe missing, as when I blew some compressed air on the body to blow off any dust prior to getting some video shots of the finished car, just like I usually do, the air blew parts of the stripe right off, just like dust. So I'm not sure how long these stripes will survive, but I guess that just adds to the barn find theme. By this time the interior parts were dry, so I added some details to the driver figure, just to help it stand out more. Then I glued everything in place. Finally, I found a couple of tailpipe pieces I could put on the rear. It's not quite the look that I wanted, but it's something. And with these new parts added, the appearance of the car has really improved. Other than some minor suspension adjustments, the car is ready to cruise around the track once again, now looking almost as good as it drives. It's fun bringing these barn find kits to a new level with these RC chassis and a few cosmetic improvements, almost like a full-scale car restoration. I'm still thinking about experimenting with doing a little weathering on this body at some point. We'll see, but for now, I'm very pleased with the appearance of this GT500. As always, I hope you all enjoyed watching, and I'll see you next time.